So here's something that has often been requested on my channel. Axes! Yeah, it's finally time for me to talk about the uh, peculiar traits and pros and cons of axes versus swords. First of all, one of the main reasons why you would, on a historical battlefield, carry an axe rather than a sword is, well, purely economics. An axe has always been a lot cheaper than a sword. It's much easier to make, it requires less material, well, less metal at least. It's really just the axe head that is a little bit of metal. And this one even has a bit more than a lot of axes would have. If you don't have the hammer, it's really not all that much material. And the um, wooden handle or shaft is very easy to make. It's also very easy to replace. If it breaks, well, you just put another one in there. So it's pretty easy. Whereas a sword requires significant craftsmanship and uh, a long time to make. It's, um, it's more susceptible to quality issues, if you will, because if the, if the material is bad, too hard, too soft, you know, poorly tempered, poorly assembled, things of that na nature, you will have more problems with this than with that, because, well, let's face it, it's just a fairly thick piece of metal. It doesn't have to be of super high quality. It, it's thick enough to not break. And also, it's not as dependent on a sharp edge as a sword is. Because the sword, the, the blade doesn't have all that much weight, so the blunt impact is really not that much. That's something that people often underestimate, or rather overestimate the power of a blunt impact strike of a sword, I should say. And an axe, well, even if, if it's, even if it gets dulled, it's still gonna do quite a bit of damage to hack into someone with it. By the 15th and 16th century, it became uh, pretty usual for even just commoners, regular foot soldiers, to have uh, steel swords and uh, plate armor. So uh, by that time, it wasn't really that relevant anymore. But before, it, the sword was really a noble's weapon. So the commoner had to pick up something else. And uh, they may very well have had an axe, a tool axe, because, well, <laughs> that's pretty handy for a variety of tasks, chopping wood and carpentry and things like that. So you can use a tool as a still relatively effective weapon. And also an ax doesn't require quite as much skill as a sword because, well, edge alignment is still important because if you kind of strike with it when it's very much off center, it's still likely to bounce off. But uh, even so, it has a bit more heft towards the end. So even if you were to just hit with a flat, that would still cause considerable damage against bone, um, hard material in general. And uh, speaking of hard material, it, an axe is generally, I find, a little more effective against something that offers a lot of resistance. Like if you were to, um, let's say, try to cut at soft tissue, like the abdomen, let's say, with a sword, that would be pretty effective because you could well, essentially gut them, which is very nasty, of course. With an axe, on the other hand, it wouldn't be as effective because it has a pretty short cutting edge. So it's not much of a draw cut, really. It's much better at burying itself into a relatively dense, heavy target. Like if you were to chop into the chest, yeah, that would cause a lot of damage. And uh, it might get the, the axe head stuck, which is a bit of a drawback. Then again, swords have also been stuck in uh, enemies' bodies. So um, yeah, that's always a bit of an issue. The most striking difference no pun intended, between an axe and a sword is the balance. Because the point of balance is very, very different. It's basically inverted. Because you have most of the weight on a sword here, not just because you have the guard and pommel, but also because a properly made historical sword has a distal taper, meaning that it is thicker here, and then it becomes thinner towards the end. And that results in a point of balance being fairly close to the hilt, in this case it's about here, whereas the, an axe is basically the exact other way around. Point of balance is very close to the handle because of course that's where all the mass is. 
So what that means is it's a bit more strenuous to use with all the weight at the end. So that means that you have a lot of impact force when striking something. It's, it can be quite devastating, but it also means that it requires a lot more energy to actually stop the weapon and, and redirect it. So you would actually kind of keep it swinging and uh, instead of trying to, after a powerful swing, to stop it right here, which you would normally do with a sword because you want to stay in a guard position, instead you would just bring it back up and just basically keep swinging it in circular motions to get the most out of the momentum so you don't have to you know, put that much energy into every single swing. And by the way, that's also something you can do with a one-handed sword to conserve energy. But the drawback of that is that in that moment when you're kind of swinging it back up, even though you are bringing it back up into a guard position, but you are kind of vulnerable when your weapon is back. So if your opponent just evades that strike, side steps, back steps, whatever, and uh, then as soon as you're trying to bring it back up, then they attack. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. So an axe is simply not as agile as a sword. It doesn't feel quite as lively in the hand, although you can mitigate the effect to an extent because it depends on, well, how much of a lever you have. If you're holding it all the way back here, that's the most powerful swing possible, but that also requires the most energy. Whereas if you hold it further up here, it's much quicker to use, but uh, that of course doesn't have quite as much power and also the reach is severely lacking. But that can actually be an advantage if you get into really close quarters, then you can actually slide up all the way and can do draw cuts, push cuts, uh, even kind of punch with it, things like that. And one of the major advantages of an axe is the uh, 90 degree angle here, because that makes for an excellent hook. You can hook an opponent's blade and uh, pull it out of the way. You can hook an arm, say, pull that. Uh, you could, for instance, hook it in the back of their knee and pull. You could hook the shield out of the way. Speaking of which, shield and axe make for a very good combination because the shield actually compensates for the drawback of the axe, namely that it's not all that quick to respond to attacks with and it's not the greatest at parrying. So if you do that with a shield, you cover yourself, you, you parry attacks with the shield, you, you kind of swipe into the side and then you come in with, with the axe, things like that, that works extremely well. So it was definitely a somewhat popular choice on the battlefield. Uh, speaking of parrying with uh, just the axe, that still can work fairly well because the nice thing about it is that an incoming cut can be parried with the blade like that or with the axe head. And the nice thing is that this of course won't damage the axe. It's way too thick there. That doesn't really have any effect on it. Whereas if a sword edge crashes onto this, yeah, that's most likely going to damage the sword edge quite a bit. Whereas this here, really not that much of a deal. This is a bit more robust in general. And finally, some remarks about the handle. This is a solid hickory handle and uh, trust me, there's no way you're going to cut through it in one strike. Especially not when your opponent is actually holding it and when it's just firmly planted in the ground, it's a bit easier to cut and, and damage. But when it's actually held in the hand, yeah, guess what? If you, as soon as you strike it, it's going to move to the side. It's going to take a lot of the impact away from it or a lot of the force, it's gonna redirect it. So yeah, it would be pretty difficult. It's of course, it will be damaged. It is just wood after all, and it will be, you know, scratched and dinged up and, and have some cuts in there, some, some chips uh, cut out of. So it will be necessary to replace over time, of course, but any kind of weapon it gets damaged. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's just not going to be cleanly cut in half in one swing, like you see in the movies, which that simply isn't, doesn't work. And also, it's not that likely to break, at least if you're using proper material. 
uh, ash wood was pretty popular for those it works quite well and uh, yeah I think I have covered most of what there is to say is always something more you can add of course but uh, yeah just some of the basics thanks for watching